I received another question in an email. Someone asked me a question about Judas. He mentioned how Judas and the Antichrist are both called by the same name. Judas is called the son of perdition. In John 17, 12, it says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So that's referring to Judas. And then also the Antichrist is called the son of perdition. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, where it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Many men today sang along with a song that came out around 10 years ago that said, I'm still in love with Judas by the wicked singer Lady Gaga. And when someone betrays someone today, they say he gave him a Judas kiss. Judas was the traitor, the betrayer. And he still talked about today. He sold out the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. He died and went to his own place, most likely the bottomless pit. So the question has to do with Judas. And I'll get into that more later. But the question also has to do with, can a person worship the beast today? Well, I guess you can, but it wouldn't be the same as worshiping the beast in the tribulation. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. John said in his first epistle, even now are there many Antichrist. So the devils and the devil are inhabiting the rich men, the famous men, and the celebrities of this age because they want worship. So it is possible to worship an Antichrist. You worship what you put the most time in, what you think about the most, what you put above everything else. The beast will be the devil incarnate. Men will worship the devil and devils today. However, there is a difference between worshiping Worshipping the devil today and worshipping the Antichrist in a future tribulation period. Because it says in 1 Thessalonians 1, nine, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Today someone who worships the devil could believe the gospel and be saved. But in the tribulation if someone worships the Antichrist and receives his mark willingly, then there is no turning back from that. He wouldn't be able to say, I, well, I turned to God from my idol, the, the Antichrist, the idol shepherd. He couldn't say that because in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, it says otherwise. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So there's a conscious decision that's made when someone gets the mark. And you can't take the mark of the beast today. There is no mark of the beast until the beast shows up. You can worship the devil today but this doesn't mean you couldn't get saved afterwards there's there's nothing that you can you can do that would cause you to be uneligible to be saved in first john 2 2 it says and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world so there's nothing you can do today that would disqualify you from being saved that's not like the tribulation if somebody willingly receives the mark and worships the Antichrist, then that's something that's going to keep him from being able to turn to God from idols. So here is where the question comes up. The person who has this question has a friend who was trying to explain to someone how Jesus is great. He was witnessing to somebody, and he, he was wanting to say Jesus is great, but he said he accidentally said Judas is great. And then he thought to himself, he knows that Judas is called the son of perdition, just like the Antichrist is called the son of perdition. So this man is worried that maybe he has worshipped the beast and that he's doomed for all eternity now. 
But the first thing is you got to remember the man is obviously saved that said Judas is great. He was witnessing to someone about the Lord when this happened. So, if, man, if this man's truly born again, he can't lose his salvation. The second thing is you can't worship the beast today in the sense that someone does in the tribulation. So this doesn't automatically damn him. And the third thing is this wouldn't even be a sin that he said Judas is great because from the heart he meant to say Jesus is great, but he misspoke. He didn't mean to say Judas is great. God knows who truly worships him and who doesn't. He knows our heart. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we meant to say. So the answer is no. 100% no. He's, he's not doomed for eternity for saying Judas is great. This guy didn't worship the beast. That's, it's not even close. I don't think it's a sin to misspeak. And actually, I think he'll be rewarded for witnessing to someone about the Lord Jesus Christ. God sees the heart. He knows he didn't mean to say Judas. And even if he did mean to say Judas, you can't worship the beast today in the sense that you would worship him in the tribulation. You can turn to God from idols. If anybody out there is worshiping the devil or has been an idol worshiper and they've not ever been born again, they can turn to God from idols. They they can quit relying on their self as, a, as being good enough to get to heaven and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and rely on Him to get to heaven. All you have to do to be saved is come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. That's all it takes to go to heaven. It doesn't matter if you worship Elvis or Lady Gaga and sing I'm in love with Judas. If you sing the I'm in love with Judas song by Lady Gaga one million times, that's not going to keep you out of heaven if you'll come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, and it'll be like that never even happened. He'll justify you. Being justified is like justified never sinned. It would be like that stuff never even happened. If you'll just come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel. There is no sin. This will answer a lot of people's questions. There is no sin that you can do today that would disqualify you from being able to come to Jesus Christ and being saved. And if you're, you are saved, this will answer a bunch of other people's questions. If you are saved, there's nothing that you can do that would take away your salvation. But you want to be saved before it's too late. You could die tonight. The rapture could happen right now. You want to be saved right now. Today is the day of salvation. So you're a sinner. You've sinned against an almighty God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. And there's nothing you can do, nothing good enough you can do to earn your salvation. Jesus Christ did all the work. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross. He was buried and resurrected. He is the Son of God. He's God in the flesh. And he wants you to be saved. He's got salvation held out to you, wanting you to take it. He's like, here it is. It's free. It's a free gift. Will you take it? Come to Jesus Christ today. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.